Vicky Donnell Cummings. On March 28, 2011, at the Lakewood Villas Apartments Complex in Waco, Cummings, then 21, and two accomplices, his brother Dervis Cummings, and Albert Love Jr., approached the car where 17-year-old Juice Sneed and 20-year-old Keenan Hubert were in, with two other males. Using several weapons, they opened fire and riddled the car with bullets. Sneed and Hubert were shot eight times, and died at the scene. The two other victims, Deantre Majors, and Marion Bible, although wounded, escaped running while being pursued by Cummings. They were not fatally shot because the gun Cummings was carrying, jammed. Supposedly the crime was committed in revenge for the murder of Emil Bowers, in April 2010, where Bowers was shot and killed while sitting in a car in a Waco park. Albert Love Jr. was convicted of the murders and sentenced to death. His conviction was later overturned. At his trial the prosecution said Cummings was a gang member and a remorseless killer who wanted Hubert dead, but didn't care who else got hurt or killed in the course of his mission. The strongest evidence against Cummings were some text messages found in the perpetrator's phones, and eyewitnesses that saw the crime happen. Cummings testified in his own defense giving an alibi for the night of the murders. He said he was selling marijuana several blocks away. The jury didn't buy his story and on November 13, 2012, Ricky Cummings was sentenced to death. He's now 29 years old and sits on Texas death row for more than six years. Brandon Daniel On February 2014, Daniel was convicted of the murder of police officer Jaime Padron. On April 6, 2012, between midnight and 1 a.m., Daniel went to a Walmart with the intention of robbing the cashier. While walking around the store, some employees saw that Daniel was intoxicated, so they called police to stop him from driving. When Officer Padron arrived at the store he told Daniel to stop. But he began running towards the front exit. Padron tackled Daniel and both fell to the ground. At the same time a gunshot was heard and a few seconds later Daniel was seen putting a gun to Padron's neck and firing a second shot. While Padron bled profusely from his neck, Daniel was secured by Walmart employees until paramedics and police arrived. At trial, one of the employees said that after shooting Officer Padron, Daniel laughed and said, I killed a cop. Jaime Padron died at the scene. He was 40 years old and had two young daughters. I think there's no doubt here, but if you know something different, please let us know in the comments. On March 7, 2014, Brendan Daniel entered Texas death row. He's 31 years old. David Lynn Carpenter David Carpenter was put on death row for the murder of 52-year-old Nelda Hennon, in Pleasant Grove, Dallas, in August 28, 1991. The perpetrator entered the victim's residence and slit her throat. The crime went unsolved for six years. Then, in 1997 police received an anonymous phone call accusing David of the murder. He was arrested and two years later, on March 1999, sentenced to death. There's many problems with this conviction. Police had no evidence at all, linking Carpenter to the murder. Only an eyewitness that gave police a description of the suspect that didn't match Carpenter, and hearsay for David's ex-wife, that shouldn't have been allowed at trial. David Carpenter is on death row for 19 years. There's a link in the description, so you can read a letter from Carpenter explaining his case. Carl Wayne Bunchen Bunchen was 46 when he entered death row. He's now almost 74. What means 27 years and 3 months living 23 hours a day alone in a cell? Bunchen was convicted and sentenced to death for the execution-style murder of Houston police officer James Irby, on June 1990, during a traffic stop. Irby was shot three times, once in the forehead and twice in the back. Carl Wayne Bunchen was convicted in 1991. He's the oldest inmate on Texas death row. Probably not for long. Billy Wayne Coble on August 29, 1989, Coble killed three members of his estranged wife's family. Their parents and her brother, Waco Police Sergeant Bobby Vicha. Coble had recently separated from his wife and after kidnapping her and later released her, he went to Bobby Vicha's house and shot him in the neck after some struggle. Then he went to the Vicha family home and shot Karen's parents. When Karen Vicha arrived home, Coble was waiting for her. He then handcuffed her and took her to a rural area. During the drive he assaulted Karen, as she later testified at his trial. Coble was eventually apprehended after a police chase in Bose County, that ended when he crashed into a parked car. Billy Coble was sentenced to death on June 14, 1990. 
He's on death row for 28 years and 6 months, and is scheduled to be executed on February 28, 2019. Thanks for watching. If you liked, please subscribe and give a big thumbs up for Marley. Have a happy new year, and see you next video.